Having your own membership site is a great way to make money online. Now there are lots of pros and cons to having your own membership site, and I'm going to talk about some of them in this video. Okay, let's talk about the pros because these are often the reasons that people get involved with a membership site in the first place. And I suppose the first one and the one that makes having a membership site most attractive is that it generates a regular income. Now, while it's not a set it and forget it business model, you don't have to start from scratch over and over again. So you don't have to think up new products, you don't have to have different marketing campaigns, you don't have to do all the selling over and over again. You can just simply get a lot of uh, people subscribing and the money comes in on a regular basis over, over the month or the year or however often that you have your subscription model. So it generates a regular income, which of course is something that doesn't happen a lot online, especially if you're relying on sales or providing a service. And of course, it's an asset that you can sell later. You can demonstrate that you have a viable business that's generating a regular income. And this is very attractive to someone who wants to run a business as a going concern instead of starting one from scratch. And of course, you can sell other products off the back of it. You know, your membership list is a list of active buyers. You know, they're people who know, trust, and are used to making purchases from you. And this alone is worth its weight in gold. So you can sell other things to the members in addition to their membership. You can sell them ebooks, or you can sell them courses, or you can sell them coaching. You know, there's a whole lot of different things that you can sell off the back of your membership site to its members. And in so many ways, a membership site can be a license to print money, but it's not all plain sailing. So let's look at some of the cons when it comes to having your own membership site. Well, first of all, there's the upkeep. Unlike with selling a product or having a sales letter website, that once you've got the product up and you've got the website up, all you've got to do is drive the traffic to it. With a membership site, you need to constantly come up with new content over and over again to keep the people who are members happy. And you also need to be on hand to maintain the site. You want to keep it safe from hackers. You want to make sure that uh, everything is running smoothly. And it does perhaps need a bit more work than just a single sales letter site. And running a membership site can be demanding. You know, someone needs to be on hand 24-7 to answer member queries, to moderate forum posts if you have a forum on your membership site, and so on. So that means that if you're going to be going on holiday, for example, if you have just an ordinary sales site, you might um, take it down for the duration while you're away on your vacation. But with a membership site, you can't do that because people are paying for access to it all the time. So you need to have someone there all the time to take care of the site. So it does tend to be a bit of a tie. And you also need to maintain traffic levels, you need to advertise the site, you need to get new members, you need to ensure that old ones don't leave. And that's called the attrition rate, the rate at which people subscribe, stay for a while and then drop off. So you need to keep that to um, a minimum, you need to make sure that everybody who is a member is going to stay subscribed to being a member because obviously you rely on that for your income. And it can be hard to keep a membership site unique. You know, there are many membership sites on the same topics out there. And some niches, particularly some of the ones that lots of people like to get into with membership sites that make money online, work from home, internet marketing niches are very, very competitive. So you have to justify why members should subscribe to your site instead of somebody else's. And this can be very difficult and it can be very demanding. But all in all, a membership site is a very good investment and you should be able to generate some pretty good income from it if you do it properly. So there you go, just a few of the pros and cons of having your own membership site. In this video, I wanna talk you through some of the more conventional membership site types that there are out there. 
because a conventional type of membership site is the one that most people will want to create, especially if it's your first membership site. And the first type of membership site is a free one. Now, when it's a free membership site, it means that anyone with an interest in the subject can join. And of course, because it's free, it's very popular. And it's a great way of creating a mailing list because everybody who becomes a member of your site automatically gets subscribed to your mailing list. So you can uh, use that as a means of generating income by selling affiliate products to your mailing list, by uh, selling solo ads and that sort of thing. So that's a good way to actually build a mailing list is to have a free membership site. Now, a, a free membership site is generally monetized through selling advertising on the site and through mailings to your list, uh, as I was just mentioning. You could also perhaps talk about some products on your site and sell them as an affiliate. That's another way to monetize a free membership site. And some examples of free websites are the PLR Wholesaler, which you can find here at plrwholesaler.com. And this is a site that has lots of, um, well, it's mostly PLR ebooks and that sort of thing on it. And as it says here, instant access for free. Another good example is the Luxury Train Club. This is a club for people who enjoy traveling on luxury trains, you know, things like the Orient Express and that sort of thing. Another business model when it comes to running a membership site is the so-called freemium business model. Now, on a freemium membership site, some parts of the site are free, but others are subscription only. And the subscription only part contains premium or more up-to-date content than the free part of the site. And you can use the free part of the site as a teaser for the paid part, but you must make sure that the premium content offers real value for money. So you want to make sure that people have a reason to subscribe and actually pay the fee to get the good stuff that you're going to have on the site. But you must make sure that the free stuff that you give away on the site isn't junk because that's what people are going to form a judgment on as to whether or not they should subscribe to the main part of the site. And a good example of a freemium site a freemium membership site is the New York Times. You can come to the New York Times main website and you can read a selection of their stories off the page, all for free. But if you want to read this on your tablet device or your smartphone, or if you want more in-depth information or you want to dive into their archive, that sort of thing, then you have to subscribe and there are various subscription plans that you can have. And then there are subscription membership sites. And these are probably the most popular type of membership site model where people have to pay to access all of the content that's on the site. Now you can offer different levels of membership with access to different content or with access to more recent content depending on how you can do it and you'll notice that some subscription only sites offer different levels of membership you know bronze silver gold and the higher up you go in the uh, in the medals tally as it were the more information that you get the more relevant information that you get the more recent information that you get and one thing that you could consider doing if you're going to have a subscription site is to consider offering a free trial to get members interested. You could offer a free trial for, say, 30 days. If you do that, it's a good idea to offer a free trial to the gold area or the most expensive area, just so that members can see what they're going to get for the maximum subscription and also what they're not going to get if they subscribe at some of the lower tiers. And some good examples of subscription-only sites include Mediate.com, and this is a membership site for dispute resolution practitioners and programs and it's also a directory of uh, practitioners as well 
And also makeup.school, which is professional makeup training for makeup artists. And again, this is a purely subscription only membership site. And this is also a good model if you're offering courses or training. Because what you can do with the subscription website, you can offer training by the course. Or you can get people to take out a monthly or an annual subscription for unlimited access. And a very good example of this type of site is lynda.com, which is L-Y-N-D-A dot com. And they do offer a 10-day free trial, but then after that, it is subscription only. And they do offer different membership levels as well. If I just click here on sign up, you can see here you've got standard and premium. And you can see premium gives you access to uh, more areas of the site. And finally, you can have a membership site as an offshoot of a club or an organization. Now, in this sort of model, access is strictly private and is limited to club members only. And sometimes non-members might be offered access to the forum part of the site, you know, just as an incentive to get them to join the club itself so they can see what it's like to be part of the community. Let me show you some examples. First of all, this one, the Austin Healy Club, and this is a club for aficionados of the Austin Healy sports car. And you can see on the front page, there's all sorts of information about the club and the sort of things that it does to entice people to become members. And of course, membership doesn't just mean you get to access the site. You do all the other stuff that goes with being a member of a classic car club. But you can see they do have a members area and things in here would only be accessible to members of the club itself. Then you've got the Maidenhead Lawn Tennis Club. And this sort of site is typical of many sports club membership sites. You had to be a member of Maidenhead Lawn Tennis Club to access a lot of the things here, like um, booking a court or looking here in the members area, you know, the members phone book and committee meeting minutes, etc. And then also the London Chamber of Commerce. Uh, again, a lot of information on the front page which uh, might uh, entice people to uh, join the organization but if you really want a lot of the information that's on the website then you do have to be a member so as you can see there are all sorts of different types of membership sites out there so take a look and see which one is going to best fit your requirements In this video, I want to talk you through some of the different types of unconventional membership sites that there are out there, because there are lots of sites out there on the internet that are technically membership sites, but you might not be aware that that's exactly what they are. And these are the sort of things that you might perhaps want to copy or to build on. Now, the first type of membership site that a lot of people don't really think of as a membership site are actually social media. Now, I'm not talking about social media like um, Instagram or Twitter because they're really more apps than web-based. But lots of social media sites, well-established social media sites, actually started out as being just a pure and simple membership site. Let me um, give you some examples. And I suppose the granddaddy of them all is Facebook. And Facebook is a membership site. In order to access the site, you have to be a member. And it started out, you know, the story that it was just for students at Harvard University and then it simply grew and now covers the whole world. But it's a good example of a free website as well because it doesn't cost anything to join Facebook and they make their money through selling advertising. So again, Facebook, you might not think of it as being a membership site, but really that's exactly what it is. Another example here is LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is a networking site for business professionals. And again, it is a membership site. You have to be a member in order to read the profiles uh, or 
read the profiles in detail of other members and to participate in the discussions and that sort of thing and it is a good example as well of a freemium site because it doesn't cost anything to join to have basic access but if you want uh, some of the more advanced parts of the site some of the more advanced statistics then you do have to take out a subscription and become a full paying member but of course Again, like Facebook, a lot of people think of LinkedIn as being social media rather than being a membership site. But technically, these are both membership sites. Another type of membership site that's been growing in popularity is software as a service. Now, this is something that sprung up really in the last couple of years, and it's grown to be a very popular type of membership site. And really, it's been the growth of broadband and the increase in broadband speeds that has enabled this to happen. And what happens is, instead of having the software on your computer, users subscribe to the site and use the software online. And this has done lots of things for software. For a start, it's meant that it doesn't matter what type of computer you have. In fact, sometimes you can actually run some of these software programs on your phone and you have the processing power of a web server behind it. But also, it has a big advantage for software developers insofar as it makes it virtually impossible for software to be pirated. I mean, up until a few years ago, when all software had to be installed on your computer, you had to have different versions for PCs or Macs. And of course, you'd look on a well-known auction site and you'd find all sorts of uh, people selling knocked off copies of Photoshop or uh, Microsoft Office or that sort of thing. But with software as a service, with people accessing it through a membership site, that can't happen because the software doesn't get downloaded. But also you always have the latest version so you don't have to download and install upgrades onto your computer because that's done automatically on the site. Now some good examples of software as a service are Basecamp and Basecamp is um, a communication software I suppose you could call it. It's where if you've got different people who are collaborating on a project, they can communicate with each other via Basecamp. So you don't have to keep sending emails, you don't have to keep uh, transferring documents, that sort of thing. And it's very useful if you work on projects with people in different countries or people who are traveling and that sort of thing. So you can keep it all in one spot. Another good example is Lubith, and Lubith is a WordPress theme generator, and it's all done online. You design your WordPress theme online, and then you uh, download it at your computer, and then you can upload it to your WordPress site. But everything is done online. You don't have to install any software at all. And Lubith has both free and paid for versions. With the free version, it includes a link at the bottom of your new WordPress theme that takes it back to Lubith. So they do have some benefit for you having a free Lubith theme. Um, Adobe has now moved most of their software over to their Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, years ago, you used to be able to buy things like Photoshop on a DVD and install it on your computer. But now most of their software, as I said, is on the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud, which means that you can access it from anywhere and on any device. And of course, it's always up to date. But of course, you do have to subscribe to this. And so uh, you know there is very little risk as far as Adobe is concerned of their uh, software being pirated, which was a big problem for them in the past. And even Microsoft is getting it on the act. Microsoft Office 365 is the uh, online software as a service version of their popular Office suite. And in addition to being able to do all of your work online and save it online, so uh, if your computer crashes, you haven't lost everything, uh, you can also work on documents on things like your tablet and your smartphone, etc. And then there are databases. Now, database 
membership sites are where you have a lot of data, information that you've gathered or collated. And if people want access to that data, then they have to subscribe to your site. And you keep the data constantly updated so that people know that the data is going to be the most up-to-date data that there is available on this particular subject. And it can be on all sorts of different subjects. And so people have a good reason to stay subscribed because they're going to be accessing the most recent data. Let me show you what I mean. Now, some good examples of database sites are TripAdvisor, and TripAdvisor allows you to search for uh, all sorts of things, hotel rooms, flights, holiday rentals, restaurants, etc., etc. And it includes information about these various places. You can also book via the site. It includes reviews here of uh, different places and this is all user generated content and user generated feedback and you can also see that they do have some advertising on the site as well um, dating sites well they're good examples of database sites uh, because of course it is all data information entered in by members um, so things like match.com are very good examples of database sites and then there's, of course, the things that most people think of when they think about data, and that's things like market data. A good example of a site that has lots of market data is the Wall Street Journal. As you can see, they do have some areas of the site that are open to the public. You can see all these different uh, market information here. But they also have a members-only subscription part of the site as well. And finally, you can have a combination of different types of uh, unconventional membership site. You could perhaps offer data and software, or you could perhaps offer uh, some type of social media and data, that sort of thing. Or you could perhaps have data and a more conventional type of membership site with articles and a forum and that sort of thing but it's all in combination but there are certain unique facets to your membership site that people can't get anywhere else and the best example that i can think of is the motley fool and the motley fool has lots of information on the site you've got market information you've got information about investing um, you've got some advertising for investment related uh, products and services. Uh, you've got investing reports. You've got, let's go at the top here. You've got news articles and news videos. You've got uh, all sorts of interesting information, share advisors and share dealing and so on all sorts of information all collated some is market data some is articles that have been written and some are videos some is news and it's all lots of different things that uh, go together to make this particular site and you've got different versions this is the uk site but you've got one in australia or germany or canada or singapore or the us so as you can see if you want to start a membership site, it doesn't have to be just a conventional type of membership site. You can have different types of membership site, some that you might not have considered in the past because it doesn't really come across as being a membership site. And you can have different combinations as well. So there's lots and lots of scope to make money with different types of membership sites. Choosing the right niche, or niche as some people pronounce it, for your membership site is probably the most important decision that you're going to make when it comes to uh, having a membership site. You want to make sure that you have enough people who are going to subscribe, that you, you know, it's a popular enough topic, but you also want to make sure that there's not too much competition because then you've got to really go out and hard sell your membership site to make sure that you know people will be more inclined to subscribe to your site than they would be to subscribe to a competitor's site so in this video i just want to talk you through some of the different types of membership site niches that you might want to consider 
And I suppose the first niche and one of the most popular types of niche are hobby niches. And there are probably as many hobby niches as there are hobbies. You know, every part of the spectrum can be covered. And this is great, particularly if you have a hobby that you'd like to turn into a business, because then, of course, it doesn't really seem like work. So hobby niches are great. Now, hobby niche membership sites work best if you can, first of all, demonstrate tips and tricks. I suppose the best example of this is if you have a video game based hobby site and you can show how to get to the next level and that sort of thing. And it also helps if you can have tutorials. You know, there's lots of hobby sites out there based on restoring classic cars and they'll have tutorials showing you how you can do a certain job, how you can make something new again and that sort of thing. And they're very, very useful. And of course, if you're able to let users share ideas, then you can really build your hobby membership site into a real community, a real portal that everybody who is interested in that particular hobby is going to naturally gravitate to. And a good example of a hobby site is this one, the quilt.net, which is all about quilting. And as you can see, you've got some uh, information here in the public domain but you've also got a lot of information that is just for members you can click here to access the members area and you've got things you've got resources things about programs for quilting there's a blog there are uh, information about events news and so on and this is really typical of the sort of hobby members site that you could start quite easily. Another really good niche for membership sites is the business or professional niche. Now, when you're looking at this niche, there really are two distinct markets. The first market are for newbies, people who are just starting out in business. And then there are established businesses and you can make a membership site that's going to counter for each of these two markets individually or you can go for one that uh, combines both markets. Uh, it's up to you really. Now let's look at the sort of things that newbies need from a membership site in a business niche. First of all they're going to need to know the basics. And they are good candidates for course-based membership sites. You could have a membership site that does all sorts of different tutorials, tutorials on things like how to build a website or how to conduct sales calls, that sort of thing. And uh, they are very popular with newbies because you know this is knowledge that they don't have. And of course, lots of people who are starting out will gravitate towards the internet marketing or the make money online niche. And you know, th this is a very popular niche for membership sites. But of course, because it is a popular niche, there is a lot of competition there. Now, established businesses, uh, their needs are somewhat different to newbies. First of all, they're going to need information that will help take them up to the next level so they can go from being just a one-man band on to actually building up a viable business with staff and offices and all that other sort of stuff. And they often need support with specific issues. And of those, a lot of people need help with tax and accounting they need help with hiring employees. They need help with customer relations and that sort of thing. So you could build a site around that, around those specific issues. Now, when you have a membership site aimed at established businesses, then a forum really is essential because you can get other people who are already established in the business to contribute their input and that saves you a lot of work and you can also use the forum as a means of research you can find out what sort of topics people on your site are interested in and you can build articles or create products that will uh, address those issues a good example of a membership site for startup businesses or for business newbies would be Enterprise Nation, 
which you can see has uh, member resources and a lot of information about starting up a new business. And for more established businesses, uh, something like the London Chamber of Commerce and Industry website is a good one. This is affiliated, of course, with the London Chamber of Commerce and Industry, but is typical of many such sites that you'll find all over the world. And then there are the personal niches. And lots of these can be considered evergreen niches, things that people are going to be interested in over a long period of time, things that's very popular. And of those, probably the two most popular ones are going to be the health-related niche. And health-related niches can be either specific, you can focus on one particular aspect of health or coping with one particular ailment or condition, or they can be more general health niches, you know, keep fit and that sort of thing. And the other one that's very popular is the dating niche, but the dating niche is very oversubscribed. There are lots of uh, different dating sites out there. So you might want to perhaps drill down a bit and be a bit more specific if you decide to have a dating site. You could have something like dating for teenagers, dating for professionals, dating for seniors, etc., etc., etc. And you can apply that sort of logic to other personal niches as well. A good example of a health-related niche membership site would be the Cancer Survivors Network, which is sponsored by the American Cancer Society. And it's got lots of information. There's um, a forum and discussion boards. Uh, there are resources, a chat room, and so on. And you can apply this sort of format to other health-related niches as well. Uh, a good example of a dating site would be eHarmony. And again, all of this information on here is user-generated. So if you're looking to start a dating site, then um, something like this is a good model to try and build on. Now, whatever type of niche you decide to go for, you really want to do your homework before you actually start to create the site. You want to make sure that there is a lot of interest in your topic, but that there's not too much competition. So let me share some of my favorite niche research tools that can really help point you in the right direction. And the first is the Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Now, it's quite a long URL, but if you just type Google AdWords Keyword Planner into Google, uh, you'll be redirected to the site. And you can log in with your Google ID. And it basically gives you a lot of information about searches for particular keywords. Uh, we're using membership sites for this demonstration. And you can see when trends are, you know, when searches go up and down. And it also gives you a lot of information about um, how much it would cost you to buy a Google AdWords ad for these particular keywords. And that, I suppose, is its primary purpose. But you can use it just for straight market research. Another one is the SEO book keyword tool. And this gives you a lot of information. Um, it's quite complicated, but there is a video on the site which explains how it all works. And you can find out more at tools.seobook.com forward slash keyword hyphen tools forward slash SEO book. Then there's Market Samurai. Now Market Samurai can be a bit hard to get your head round um, to start off with. But once you work out exactly how it works, you can get a lot of information about market research this way. Um, it is a paid for piece of software, but you can get a free trial, which should be uh, enough to, you know, just to help you get started and uh, set you on your way to doing your market research for um, your membership site. And there's finally, there's CB Engine, which you'll find here at cbengine.com. And CB Engine will tell you the most popular products on ClickBank. One tip here is if you come down and click on this radio button here where it says recurring only, yes, then you'll get a list of their top performing 
recurring payment products. And these are more likely than not to be membership sites. So you can get an idea as to what type of membership site is popular at the moment. And this in itself is also a membership site. And it is actually a very good example of a curated data site as well. So a few ideas to help you find the right niche for your membership site. There are lots of different platforms that you can use to build your membership site. And I'm going to talk about the three most popular ones in this video. Now, the first one is WordPress with S2 Member. Now, S2 Member is a WordPress plugin, and there are both free and paid for versions. And you can install the free version of S2 Member from within the WordPress dashboard, uh, just like you would any other plugin. And you can get the paid for version from this site here, S2, the number two, member.com. And you can see it's very advanced. You've got all these different uh, payment methods it'll integrate with. There are uh, S2 member compatible themes. And there's a whole lot of stuff about it, which you can read on the site. Uh, several versions that you can have. You can say there's the free version. Uh, there's the pro version that just goes on a single site. Or if you're planning on having more than one membership site, then you can have the multi-site version, which is slightly more expensive. But these are one-time payments. It's not recurring. So once you've got it, you've got it. And then there's Member Mouse. Now, Member Mouse is another WordPress plugin, but it is perhaps slightly more sophisticated than S2 Member. And you can read all about it at membermouse.com. This is a paid for piece of software, but the amount that you pay and it is a subscription piece of software as well. So it is a recurring payment. But basically, the amount that you pay depends on how many members you actually have on your membership site. It does come with a 14 day free trial and you can read more at membermouse.com. And finally, there's Wishlist Member. Now, Wishlist Member is a standalone membership site application. And you can read all about it at member.wishlistproducts.com. And it explains all about it. And there is a video on the site which uh, explains it in some detail. And you can also see the pricing options here as well. Now, those are the three most popular ones, but there are lots and lots of different types of uh, membership software out there. And you can just do a search here in Google for membership site software. And as you can see, there's about 8.9 million at the time that I'm making this video. So take some time, look around, try the free trial versions and just see which one works for you and which one you think you're going to be happiest with. But it's best to find out one that's going to work from the start because it's very, very difficult to change your software halfway through because then everybody's got to resubscribe and you'll find that a lot of people simply can't be bothered. And it's a very important decision that you really need to make before you start your membership site. So do take some time uh, to look through the different options. In this video, I want to talk about why you should have a forum on your membership site. And I'd go so far as to say that a forum really is an essential part of your membership site for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it allows member interaction. And when members can communicate with each other and they can share ideas, then it gives them a good reason to stay subscribed. So your attrition rate will go down. And of course, it gives people a reason to come back. And sometimes people will stay members just for the forum after they've read all your articles, after they've watched all your videos and everything else that you've got on the site. Sometimes it's the fact that they can communicate with like-minded people via the forum that will make them come back and stay subscribed to your member site. And of course, when you have a forum, you can find out what your members are interested in. And when you do that, you can expand on popular discussions. 
and you can use those as a base for developing new content. So you can see what people are talking about on your forum, go out and do some more research, write some more articles and give them more reasons to come back and stay subscribed to your site. And you can also use polls and surveys as part of your forum to really find out exactly what your membership wants. And once you can find out what your membership wants, then you can supply it to them and give them more reasons to stay subscribed or even to upgrade to a higher level of membership or even you can make different products off the back of what you find out from the forum on your membership site. And in fact, your entire membership site could be a forum. One of the best examples of a membership forum site that I know of is the Warrior Forum, which you can find here at warriorforum.com. And this operates on the freemium model. And what this means is that certain parts of the sites, like the main internet marketing discussion forum, the uh, the Warrior Forum is all about internet marketing, are free for members of the public to access. But other parts of the site, for example, the War Room and uh, some of these other uh, parts of the site, are for members only. And they get lots of members as you and lots of viewers. As you can see here at the time of making this video, there's uh, over a thousand people viewing the main internet marketing discussion forum and 1600 people looking for a warrior special offer. And anybody can come along and access these parts of the site. But if you want to go into the war room, then you have to be a fully paid up member. Likewise, if you want to place an advertisement on the warrior forum, either a warrior special offer, otherwise known as a WSO, or a classified ad, then you have to be a fully paid up member. And the War Room in particular has lots of things in there that uh, are former WSOs that people give away. So you've got the whole community working here. So when this site first started, the people who ran it had special things that they created just for the war and special content. But after a while, it sort of took on a life of its own and people started um, giving away WSOs that they previously sold in the war room. So it became that the whole community got involved in all this and that all of the content ended up being generated by the membership. So the people who actually ran the site didn't have to do a great deal other than moderate it. And it's a very, very successful site. It sold to freelancer.com a few years ago. I can't remember the exact figure, but it was uh, quite a lot of money for uh, the people who actually started the site. Another good example is UK business forums. Again, this works on a freemium model, but in a slightly different way. Basically, anybody can register for free to uh, read the site and to post things on the site. But if you want to do things like have a clickable link in your forum signature, then you do have to become a fully paid up member. And there are some other parts of the site that you uh, have to be a full member to access. So you see, you've got the private forum for full members and all these other ones here. So just two examples of how you can have your entire membership site as a forum. Now let's take a look at the different types of forum software that's out there. A few different types of software to look at. One is PHPBB, which is a standalone forum program. And it's free and open source, and you can download it from phpbb.com. If your website hosting comes with Fantastico or Soft Delicious, you may be able to install this from within cPanel because it does come bundled with those two software programs. Another one and a paid for solution is vBulletin. And I believe that this is the one that the Warrior Forum actually runs on. 
and you can find out more about it at vbulletin.com. If you have a WordPress site, then there's a couple of uh, plugins that you can use to add a forum to your WordPress site. The first one is Simple Press, which you can read more about at simple-press.com. And the other one is Vanilla Forums. This is a free solution and you can install it from within the WordPress dashboard. Now, one thing you're going to need to do when it comes to having a forum on your site is you're going to have to moderate it. You're going to have to make sure that it's not being abused. And because you can't be there watching it 24 seven, a good idea is to have members moderate your forum for you and report any spam messages in appropriate language, etc., so that you can deal with it later. And on most forum software has the ability to have a little button at the bottom of a post that a member can click on it to report it as being a possible rogue message. And then what you can then do is have someone on hand every day to take down any messages that might be spammy or abusive and to ban any miscreants from the site. Now, you'll need to do this every day. So it's a good idea if more than one person is involved in running a membership site, if it has a forum or if it is just a forum site. Then you can have someone take a look at the site over the weekend or when you're on holiday or on public holidays and that sort of thing. But having a forum on your site really is a fantastic asset and something that will give tremendous value, not just to your members, but to you as the site owner as well. Sometimes coming up with content for your membership site can be the most confusing aspect of starting and running a membership site. You know, just what the heck are you supposed to come up with to keep members interested? Sure, you might have plenty of material to stock up your membership site when it's new, but what's then? How do you keep coming up with fresh content week after week or month after month? And what sort of content should it be anyway? Well, let's talk about the types of content that you can have on a membership site. Probably the most common type of content on a membership site is written content. And the written content often takes the form of articles. And these can be read online or they're articles that members can download. Generally, uh, articles that are read online are the most popular type because there's less risk of piracy. Unfortunately, you do run the risk of the stuff that's on your membership site being pirated by rogue members. You know, most people are honest, but that's how the devious and dishonest people manage to get away with it. So you do have to take some sort of measures to protect your content. And having it so that readers have to log on and read it online is a very good way of doing it. Something else that you can have on your website are ebooks or white papers. White papers are sort of more technical versions of ebooks. And these can be either with or without private label rights or PLR. And finally, the last type of written content is forum posts. And forum posts are great because that gets your membership involved. It doesn't really require any input from you. Uh, all you've got to do is get the forum up and running. And then people will come back to read the forum posts that other members have put up on the forum. So really, it does mean that you don't have to spend a lot of time creating content if you have other members doing it for you in the form of forum posts. You can also have audio presentations on your membership site. Now, these can be lectures either by yourself or by other people who are experts in the field. They can be audio books. They can be books that you've written and you're going to do an audio version of it, just reading your ebook out loud and recording it. Or you could buy in 
books with private label rights and you could read those and turn them into an audio book or an audio presentation. And you can also do interviews, interviews with leading people in your niche and you can ask them questions that you've thought of or you can ask people to submit questions. You can say that we're going to be doing an interview with such and such and what would you like me to ask him or her and get people who are members of your site to submit questions and then you answer them in the interview. And audio can be the streamed or they can be a downloadable podcast. And if you do that, then MP3 is the most popular format. Although, having said that, streaming your audio presentations are probably the best thing to do because there's less risk of piracy. Plus, of course, people can listen in on their smartphones on the go. Then there are videos. Now, the subjects of your videos are going to vary according to your niche. And they can be live action or they can be screen capture. And they can be streamed over the internet from your site and people have to be logged into your site to view them. Or you can have them ready to download. And if you do have them as a download, you can also, like with ebooks, have them with private label rights or PLR just to add that extra bit of value. If you're going to embed videos and stream them from your website, you'll want some software to enable that to happen. And probably the best video player out there at the moment is JW Player, which you can read more about at jwplayer.com. And this enables you to insert um, a video player window inside a posting on your membership site. Of course, videos do use up quite a lot of bandwidth and quite a lot of storage space. So you might want to look into a third party solution for that. And probably the best one is Amazon S3, uh, which you can read more about at aws.amazon.com forward slash s3 it's best not to embed youtube videos into your membership site because even if they're not able to be found as part of a youtube search and you can set things up that way so that uh, they're not searchable but quite often people find that members object to paying for something that they could potentially get for free on YouTube. So it's best to avoid streaming your videos from the members only part of your membership site using YouTube. Another type of content that you can have on your membership site is data or data as some people pronounce it. If you're going to do that, then the data should be updated regularly. And quite frankly, the more frequently, the better. And if you can make it convenient for people to find all of the data that they need on your site rather than having to look on different sites, or you can provide data that they can't get anywhere else, then you'll have a guaranteed audience and repeat subscriptions. Then there's software. Now, software as a service is a growing market. Now, the thing is, when you have software as a service, people have to stay subscribed in order to access the software or app. And of course, there's nothing to stop you from having a membership site that contains multiple types of content. Probably the best example that I can think of of a site that does all this is The Motley Fool. And The Motley Fool has market information, it has articles about investing, it's got stock picks, there's a community, you know, the community forum sort of thing here, uh, discussion boards as they call it here, and all sorts of information all rolled into one subscription site. Now let's talk about the sources of content for your membership site. First of all, you can come up with your own content. Let's look at the pros and cons. Well, pros, first of all, it's guaranteed to be unique. And of course, you can change it and you can repurpose it because it is your own content. On the downside, though, creating your own content can be very time consuming. And so that's probably not the most efficient use of your time. 
So the next thing that you can do is to outsource uh, the creation of your content. On the pro side, well, it frees up time for you to build the business. You can actually work on your business rather than in it. And you can vary the content type by getting different people to create different types of content. Now, on the downside, this can be expensive. And the freelancer that you have in mind might not always be available because he or she might be doing a job for another client. And then there's private label rights or PLR. Now, on the pro side, PLR stuff is very quick. And of course, it's very easy. You can do this in just a few mouse clicks. And it's a lot cheaper than other solutions. Now, on the downside, of course, it's not unique. And for that reason, it's going to be hard to differentiate your site from other sites that are using the same PLR content. So you do need to take that into consideration. And then there's user-generated content. On the pros side, well, it's probably the best source of data. It's unique, and of course, it's free because the users generate it. On the downside, though, well, it needs to have some users to generate, so it's hard going in the early days. And of course, it needs moderating 24-7 because sadly, some people are going to abuse this. They're going to post spam comments. Uh, they're going to uh, post abusive comments and that sort of thing. So you do need to have some means of monitoring it all the time. But all in all, uh, there's lots of different ways of populating uh, your website with content. And I hope this video has pointed you in the right direction. How to keep your members coming back for more and reducing the attrition rate can be a real problem for some membership site owners. And I'm going to talk about that in this video. Now let's look at the worst case scenario and sadly this is something that happens quite a lot with people who run membership sites. First of all, a subscriber subscribes or avails himself or herself of a free trial offer. They log in, they read all of the content or they download all of the materials that are available to download. Then they go away and you never see or hear from them again and you simply watch as your website withers and dies through lack of subscribers. And this scenario repeats itself over and over again to the point where your website becomes unviable and you shut it down. So in order to make sure that that doesn't happen, you need to offer something that's unavailable elsewhere. And that can be something like unique content, or it can be unique data. And you also want to make it more convenient for the subscriber to find the information that he or she wants from your site rather than searching around. So even if the information is available elsewhere, if the subscriber can find everything that they want on your site, uh, they're more likely to uh, stay members because it's just easier for them, it saves them time. Another good way to uh, keep members coming back and indeed to generate more members is to have a referral scheme. So you could offer existing members, you know, X month free for every Y new subscribers that they bring in. And you can also keep members involved by running contests. And when you run a contest for, say, the best submitted article or the most popular forum post of the month that sort of thing that does give members an incentive to come back to come back and to uh, submit content and also to come back and vote and to see who is actually uh, in the lead in the contest and you can offer a prize with a high perceived value now it doesn't have to be a high real value but something that people are going to perceive as having a high value so it could be perhaps a month's free membership to uh, your more premium tier for people who are uh, not members of the top level of your membership site or it could be one of your ebooks or something like that but something that has a high perceived value and sometimes though just the prestige of winning is enough just 
sometimes being at the top of the winner's board is enough of an incentive to get people to enter the contest and to come back to see who's won. You could also offer members-only discounts on other products or services that you make. And something else that you can do is also have exclusive to members offers. These are things that are only available to members of your site and not available to the general public. So if you want to purchase this particular item, then you have to be a member of the site. You can also drip feed content. And this is the best approach to training courses if you're going to have training courses as part of your membership site. Because then people can't just simply download everything in one go and then clear off. Or you can offer access to all the courses, so everybody can access all the courses, but then you add a new course every week or every month. So there's always some new content for people to come back and see. And then, of course, there's membership involvement. I touched on this a bit earlier, but membership involvement is a good way to make sure that people keep coming back, especially if they can feel like they're part of a community. And a good way to do that is to have a forum on your website. And sometimes people will stay subscribed to your website purely and solely for the forum, for the way of interacting with other members. Software, software as a service is a growing trend now. So people have to stay subscribed to your membership site in order to access and use the software. And of course, a really good way to ensure that people stay members is to have recurring billing. Uh, so instead of having to send people an invoice and have them pay to subscribe manually, just simply have the subscription roll over until the subscriber cancels. And you can have longer subscription periods. You might find that the longer someone has to pay their subscription for, the more likely they are to stay subscribed. Because if you have, say, a monthly subscription, then people will want to go back to your site every month to make sure that they're getting their money's worth. And if they don't come to your site for a couple of months, they might think, well, it's not really worth staying subscribed. But if you have an annual subscription, then they pay for the whole year. Whether they come back every month or not becomes irrelevant because they pay for that whole year. They might you know, stay away from your site for a couple of months and then come back and start reading and interacting and that sort of thing. And you can perhaps offer um, a discount for people to subscribe annually. Say you have a certain price for a monthly subscription, but then if somebody subscribes for 12 months, you only charge them for 10. And that way, they're more likely to stay subscribed because they are actually getting a discount on the subscription. And there's lots of other ways. If only just scratch the surface here, but there's lots and lots of different ways to keep people coming back for more. There are lots of different ways that you can promote your membership site, and I'm going to cover them in this video. And the first way that you can promote your membership site is via SEO or search engine optimization. Now, SEO is old school and it can be time consuming, but it's best value in the long run. And this sort of thing works best for free or freemium sites where the uh, search engine spiders can come in and actually crawl the content and it can be displayed in search engine rankings. And it's perfect for forum sites or sites with a forum that get indexed. For example, uh, this search here in Google, what to do if you're desperate, shows up a post on the Warrior Forum. So, again, they didn't do anything uh, to get this site indexed or to get this particular thread in the forum indexed, but it has been. And anybody who's desperate for money, who does a search in Google for what to do if you're desperate, will, amongst other things, come up with uh, this site here, this link here from the Warrior Forum. 
and it's at what number one two three four five so it's in the top half of the uh, search rankings and it hasn't cost the people who run the warrior forum anything to get this and to get people to the site from this particular search and then there are solo ads now solo ads are where you get in touch with a mailing list owner in the same niche and they send an email about your site to their list membership and this works well because it's highly targeted only people who are interested in the topic are going to get to see the email and because the email comes from a trusted source it's not going to be considered spam and so it's more likely to get opened and to get read and people will find out about your site that way you can also use Google AdWords. Now, Google AdWords are pay-per-click advertising. These are targeted, but they can be a bit expensive. So it's probably best if you've already got your membership site up and running before you start using Google AdWords. You can also use Facebook and other social media to promote your membership site. Now you can have paid advertising on Facebook, which works in a similar way to Google AdWords. You could have a reference to your membership in your profile. You know, lots of social media sites will ask you as part of your profile what you do for a living. And you can put I run and then you can have the URL of your membership site. And lots of people will go to that just out of curiosity. And on forum sites, you're often allowed to have a SIG or a signature and you can put a reference to your membership site in that and if you're active on the forum then people are going to get to read your SIG and they're going to go to your site from that especially if you make your SIG compelling enough that people want to click the link and go to your site. Then there are referrals and word of mouth. Well as the old saying goes word of mouth is always the best form of advertising because if somebody gets a recommendation from someone they know and trust they're going to be more likely to act on it than they would do on an advertisement that they're just reading cold you can also have paid endorsements you can pay someone who's well known in your field to actually endorse your website and you can also offer a discount for referrals so you can tell existing members that they'll get say you know a month free subscription for every three people that they uh, sign up that sort of thing and then there's offline advertising now lots of people really don't do offline advertising for an online service which is silly really because not everybody looks online for things and so having paid advertisements in newspapers in magazines or periodicals read by your target audience can really help to uh, get the word out about your membership site. You can also do mail shots, old fashioned mail shots, where you print something out and send it through the mail. And you can send out letters or you can send out postcards uh, for people to read. And then there are things like billboards posters etc those sort of things that you see at sporting events in particular they're generally quite popular and they're a good way of advertising your online service you can also do joint ventures what you could do perhaps is join forces with a club or an organization in your niche and offer their members a discount or you could have an affiliate program you know recurring affiliate programs get promoted more vigorously than one-time offers because it's in the affiliates best interest that people stay subscribed because they're going to get paid over and over again and finally you can learn from your competitors you know look at how other membership sites especially social media sites are being advertised and learn from their experiences because Big social media sites spend millions and millions of dollars in advertising, in market research, and all you've got to do is look and see what they're doing, and if it works for them, it should work for you. So there you go, just a few ways of promoting your membership site. In this video, I want to talk about selling your membership site. 
And one way to make money with your membership site is to sell it as a going concern. Indeed, lots of people make money this way. You can sell an established website, or you can create one from scratch, load it up with content, and sell it on for somebody else to market and build up. Either way, selling your membership website on is a great exit strategy. Now, selling a membership site is no different than selling any other type of website. You need to show your website in a good light, demonstrate that it's making money or has the potential to do so, and negotiate the best possible price with the new owner. Any potential buyer will want to know a number of things. First of all, they'll want to know how much money your website is turning over every month or every year. And you should have demonstrable proof of this, such as statements from your payment processor. They'll want to know what the running costs of the site are. Again, you should be able to provide records for things like website hosting, cost of outsourcing, any ongoing subscriptions or payments to affiliates and that sort of thing. They may or may not want to see a balance sheet so they can see what the profitability of the site is, but provide the basic data anyway so that potential buyers can work this out for themselves. They may be able to provide their own cheaper hosting, for example. They'll also want some statistics about your site. And first of all, they'll want to know how much traffic your site gets. They'll want to know what the click-through rate is, They'll want to know how many visitors subscribe, and they'll want to know how many free members become paid members if you offer a free membership or a free trial. They'll also want other information that you can supply, things like uh, information from Google Analytics. They'll want to know things like the Alexa rank. They'll also want Quantcast data if you have it. And it's actually worthwhile getting Quantcast to index and rank the site and provide data because it can provide a lot of extra data about your visitors. They'll also want to know where your traffic is coming from and how you're generating it. Is it through SEO? Is it through paid ads? Is it through affiliates? Or is it through other methods? You need to have all that information to hand. They'll also want to know what the attrition rate is, or to put it another way, how many people leave the site when their subscriptions renew. They'll also want to know how many customers are on your mailing list. Are people automatically unsubscribed when they leave the site? Or does the list include people who are no longer members and or people who just took a free trial but didn't subscribe? And they'll also want to know what the lifetime customer value is. Or to put it another way, statistically, what percentage of site members purchase other products or services from you in addition to subscribing to your site? They'll need to know the level of ongoing work required. You know, how much time do you personally devote to this site every day, every week, or every month? And do other people work on the site for you? You know, if so, how much time do they devote to it? What do you pay them? Will the new owner be expected to take them on? You know, are they on the payroll as members of staff? And if so, is the new owner going to be expected to continue hiring them rather than bringing in his or her own people? They'll want to know all these different things. And sometimes it's a good idea to put all this information together as a PDF so that you can simply send that on to interested parties so they don't have to be you know, asking you questions all the time. Now, of course, a question that everybody wants to know the answer for when they're trying to sell their site is, how much do you charge for your site? Well, the truth is that your site will only sell for what people are prepared to pay for it. And that can be, you know, as undefined as how long's a piece of string. Facebook was floated at $38 per share, giving a total value of $104 billion, but that was exceptional. Generally, if a website has been running for a while and has a constant or increasing membership, in other words, it's not dropping off, then you can expect it to sell for between 8 and 12 months' worth of revenue. 
Now, there are a few caveats to that last statement. First of all, if your site is highly dependent on your hands-on involvement, then expect it to sell for less. Likewise, if you have a high attrition rate or your membership site is on a contentious subject or is based around something that is or is likely to become illegal in some countries, then expect that to sell for less too. If your site is brand new and it doesn't have many or any members on board yet, then the price is going to depend on your niche, how much material is on the site, how much work you've put into it, and whether buyers can see the money-making potential. So what you should do is see what similar sites are selling for and price yours accordingly. Okay, let's get down to the nitty-gritty of actually selling your site. Probably the best place to sell your membership site is on Flipper, which you can find here at Flipper, that's F-L-I-P-P-A dot com. And they sell a lot of websites on this particular site, along with domains and apps and all sorts of other good stuff. Then there's the Digital Point Marketplace. And again, this is a very popular place to buy and sell websites. And you can find out more at forums.digitalpoint.com. Um, there's another site here, websitebroker.com. Uh, again, another site that sells lots of different websites from ones that have just been started right up to uh, established websites. Then there's buysellwebsite.com. Again, another very similar site and quite a popular marketplace. You can also sell them on the Warrior Forum. If you go to warriorforum.com forward slash other hyphen website hyphen products hyphen services. And you can see they've got a few for sale here at the time that I'm making this video. And of course, you can always sell them on eBay as well. Although the ones that get sold on eBay tend to not go for a great deal of money. Now, some of these sites will charge you a fee to list your site. Others will charge you a commission for selling it. Some will do both. Uh, so you do need to shop around and find out which one is going to offer the best deal for your site. You can also enlist the services of a broker to assist you, and many advertise on those sites that I just showed you. Now, a few tips. First of all, if you intend to sell your site eventually, keep its working separate from your other businesses right from the start. So that means you want to have a separate payment processor, a separate autoresponder account, separate affiliates accounts, separate web server, or at least a separate account on the web server. And that means that when your site is sold, all you've got to do is uh, transfer everything over into the new owner's name and they can carry on and it can be a seamless and uninterrupted service. Another thing is if you're going to start another site in the same niche, you want to do so before you sell your current one. Now, the reason for this is some buyers will want an undertaking from you that you won't be a competitor for your old site. I mean, I suppose that's a fairly reasonable thing to assume. So you can get around that by starting your new site before you sell your old one. And then the new buyer will know that the competition from you and from your other site is still out there and is out there and the figures that you're going to provide them with for the way that your site is currently performing reflect the fact that you do have another site. And once the deal has been done and money has changed hands, change everything over to the new buyer's name and move on to your next project. It's a good idea to say that you'll be on hand to assist the new owner during the transition period and answer any queries or questions that he or she may have or advise them with any ongoing issues.